around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I'd be glad to point him out to you. I got to know everybody real well. An oh. awful nice bunch of folks. Well, thanks, Chester, but I see him, all right. Well, maybe I can introduce you. Which one is he? Fellow by the name of Chester Proudfoot. Uh, did you get to know him fairly well? Well, Mr. Dunn, you mean you come down here just to meet me? Well, any law against it? Well, no, sir. But, well, say, now that's awful nice of you, Mr. Dunn. That's awful nice. <laughs> did you have a nice trip, Chester? Yes, sir, I sure did, Mr. Good. Dillon. Just as nice as can be. Why, they couldn't have treated me no better if I'd have been a friend. Well, that's good. You find your family all right? Well, sure. They was right there where I was looking for them. <laughs> uh, well, that, that was kindly a little joke, Mr. Dillon. It was just a way of speaking kindly. I, I didn't really mean... That's the kind of a joke your family is partial to, Chester? Well, sir, we did do a lot of joshing, I'll say that. Uncle Wesley... <laughs> He's mighty comical when he's a mind to be. And Magnus was home, and, well, he was just cutting up all the time. Must be dangerous around there. How's that? Never mind. Come on, let's get your stuff. Uh, yes, sir, the driver's coming down right over there. All right. Yeah, no, 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 now, Mr. Dillon, I can handle him all right. Oh, I'll help. Yeah. There we go. Oh, before I forget, Chester, did you have any trouble picking up those papers in Dalhart? What papers is that? The papers in Dalhart, Chester. Eh. Uh, oh. You mean you forgot them? Eh. Uh, Chester, you said you'd pick them up for me on your way back through the panhandle. I, I, I know I did. I swear I must have clean forgot. I was having such a good time there with my people and all, and... It just must have knocked it right out of my head. I guess too much cutting up could do that, all right. Oh, now, I just feel terrible about that. I, I just don't know how I could have been so stupid. Well, don't worry about it, Chester. We'll get them some other way. Well, now, if you want me to, I'll turn right around and go back. No, home. no, there's it, no it need for that. It me not one Never bit. mind, it, Chester. I, I'd really kindly enjoy it, Mr. Don't take another long ride Come on, ride Chester. I better take you to the office before you forget where it is. You sure won't be taking you out of your way, Joe. Oh, I tell you, Marshal, I'm riding out that way tomorrow. I can swing back by Dalhart just as easy as not. I'll pick up your papers for you. I'd sure appreciate it, Joe. I don't know how Chester could have forgotten them, but you know how he is. He well, managed to. <laughs> there's just no telling about Chester. Oh, oh. Excuse me, Joe. I, I didn't see you coming out. Well, it don't hurt to keep your eyes open, Chester. You ever think of that? Well, they was open. It was just that I never uh, saw I'll them. see you later, Marshal. So long, Joe. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Will you close the door, Chester? The wind's blowing these papers I'm trying to get signed. Uh, oh. Uh, yes, sir. 
Mr. Dillon? Yeah. W- was you and, and, and Joe Freeze talking about me just now? What? Well, I, I could have swore I heard you saying my name when I come in. Joe's going to pick up those papers you forgot, Chester. Joe's... He's going clear to Dalhart? Yeah, he's going clear to Dalhart. Well, well, for gracious sake, Mr. Dillon, you hadn't already got somebody else to do that. I could go just easy. No, not, but... Chester, it's all been arranged. But now, I, I can do anything Joe Freeze can do. I can get them papers for you myself. Don't worry about it, Chester. Well, now, Mr. Dillon, why don't I just get Look, on Look, Chester, I've been and... trying to get through this paperwork all afternoon. Why don't you just go on out so I can finish it up, huh? Well, I will, but I don't see... Go why on, can... Chester. Yes, sir. Go on. I uh, I got things to tend to. Yes. Hey, what do you have, Kester? Beer? Whiskey? Well, thank you, Sam, but to tell the truth, I don't think I want a thing. Sure? That's right. I, I just think I'll just kindly stand here for a little bit, if it's all the same to you. Well, all right. Wouldn't you think now that anybody taking up room at the bar ought to at least buy a drink? Oh, never mind, Lud. It's all right. If everybody else comes into a saloon to buy a drink, not that Chester, though. He just comes in to lean on the bar and look like a two-fisted drink. Ain't that right, Chester? Well, yeah, I... I guess that's what it looks like. All right. Wouldn't you think now that the marshal would get himself a real man for a helper? Somebody that could do a decent job for him. Well, now, Lud, I'd do a lot of things for Mr. John. Well, I'd like to hear about that. Come on, boys. Chester's about to tell us how he runs the marshal's office. Now, I ain't saying I run the office. I ain't saying that at all. Well, well go on, then. Tell us what you do do. Yeah. Well, now, there's, there's a lot of things that I do... I go for the mail, and I, I see that the horses get took good care of, and I, I go along with Mr. Dillon on a good many of his trips. <laughs> go on, Chester. Tell us what else you do for the marshal. Well, my, I help every way I know how. I, I I make a pretty good cup of coffee, and I keep the lamps clean and filled up with coal oil. Yeah, and that's what a U.S. marshal needs, all right, somebody to keep his lamps filled for <laughs> Now, I, I don't see what's all fired funny about that. Oh, and, and, and something I forgot to mention. Sometimes when Mr. Jones too busy, well, he sends me out to do things for him to, to save him the, the trip or the trouble, you might say. Like bringing them papers from Dalhart? <laughs> How'd you come to know about that? <laughs> well, it's all over town, ain't it, boys? How Chester come all the way back without them papers? <laughs> yeah, it don't seem like Mr. Dillon would go around talking like that. Well, now, he, he didn't, Chester. Joe Freeze was in here for a drink a few minutes ago. He told me about it. And I guess there was some big ears listening. Now, come on now, Chester, have a drink. It'll make you feel better. No... No, thanks, Sam. I guess I better be getting along. Don't worry too much, Chester. Everybody needs someone to laugh at. You sure do a job for the marshal that way. (laughs) You sure do. I'm busy. You're in my way. Oh. Is this a professional call? You you look kind of seedy. Oh, my, no, Doc. I ain't sick. I just thought maybe I'd pay a little visit and see how you're getting along. Well, that's nice, Chester. I'll be glad to tell you. I'm getting along real bad. Well, I 
sure am sorry to hear that. It's a cold, miserable day. The supplies I sent for didn't get here. I've got calls to make at different ends of the county. Want to hear any more? I don't know, Doc. That sure does sound troublesome. It is. Will you settle down from your trip yet? Oh, of course, Doc. Once I get my boots off, I'm home. And I suppose Matt is managing to get used to having you around again? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know, Chester. It's just that you take some getting used to. <clears throat> oh, no, good Lord, it's three o'clock. I've got to get going. Hand me that bottle, will you? Uh, oh, uh, sure, Doc. <clears throat> No, 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 not that one. The other one. That's... Oh. Yes. Here, Doc. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Doc? No, no, I haven't time to talk anymore, Chester. Now, you can come back some well, other Would you just let me ask you one question? Yeah, but, all right, then. What is it? Well, Doc, I, I was just wondering if you got any idea at all just what Mr. Dillon really thinks about me. Uh, I mean, having me around for help or no. What do you think? Oh, for heaven's sake, of all the foolish time well, wasting questions. Could you please I... tell me, Doc? Yeah. Yes, sir, Chester, I can tell you. He thinks you're the most addle-pated, no-account, sieve-headed excuse for a helper that anybody ever had. Now, go on, go on, get on the way. I'm late. I'm late. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in your way. Chester? Yeah, I, I didn't expect to see you so soon. Oh, no, I don't want to waste no time getting back on the job, Mr. Jonas. What do you mean? Well, if I don't do nothing else around here, I can at least see Mr. Dillon don't run out of stores. I come in for some coal oil, some coffee, and a couple new wicks for the lambs. That's what I was telling you. What? You're too late. Marshall was in here, oh, I expect about a half hour ago. He was? Was he looking for me? I, I just been up to Doc's office there. For... It wasn't you he was looking for, Chester. It was some supplies. Oil, a new lamp chimney, coffee. Well, forever more, I could have got them for him. The marshal was looking at it that way, too. He was saying he sure didn't know why you'd let everything run out at once. I sort of got the impression that he didn't think you were doing your job, Chester. He... Couldn't have been funning about it, could he? Didn't sound like it to me, Chester. Sounded as though he was real provoked. You see, he ain't even laughing at me no more. Uh, how's that? Oh, uh, 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 never mind, Mr. Jonas. I guess ain't no call for me to buy nothing after all. Well, now, look who's just come in. Marshal Dillon's right-hand man. <laughs> Only he's got two left hands. Why don't you leave him be, Lud? Ah, he's not smart enough to know the difference. Hello there, Chester. You been out on some big job for the marshal? I ain't got no time to talk to you, Lud Holt. Sam's Miss Kitty around. Yeah, she is, Chester. Sitting at the back table over there. Thank you. I want to see her for a minute. Oh, no, Matt. I can't believe it. That sounds like too much even for Chester. Oh, no, it's true, Kitty. Oh, believe me. You're right. Nobody in the world but Chester would do a thing like that. <laughs> oh, hello, Chester. Come on over and sit down. Uh, no, thank you, Miss Kitty. I, I got things to tend to. What's the matter, Chester? You're trying to make me think you're working? <laughs> no, sir, Mr. Dillon. I believe I better be moving along. Well, I guess you think she's too important for her tonight. <laughs> you know, Diana. Yeah. What's the matter, Chester? Didn't you find her? I found her, Sam. I, I found her all right. Hey, Chester! Oh, Jim. Is Matt in the long branch there? Yeah, he's in there all right. I got a telegraph message for him. That's so? 
Well, he's in there, Jim, at the back table with Miss Kitty. Ah. Oh. Oh, I thought you'd want to take it to him. I got things to tend to. You take it in. Oh, all right, then. It's from Joe Freeze. Joe Freeze? Yeah, he's heading for Arizona. Ain't coming back from Dalhart after all. I don't know why the marshal would care about that, He ain't though. coming back. Well, that's what he said. Uh, give it to me, Jim. I'll take it. But you just said... Ain't nobody got a right to change his mind. You belong back in that office, Jim, watching that telegraph key every minute. Give that message to me. Say, Broom, with some pie, Matt. Elderberry. That's yeah, a good thing Chester isn't here. He'd eaten up the whole thing by now. <laughs> yeah, it's so wondering me how Chester's stomach keeps on working at all. The way he loads it down. Mm. He must be doing something mighty important to Mr. Mill. Where'd you send him, Matt? I didn't send him anywhere, Kitty. I haven't even seen him all day. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. I haven't seen him either. Well, that's kind of strange, isn't it? You suppose he's sick? Well, he was in to see me yesterday, but he didn't say anything about being sick. He acted kind of funny, though. Oh, how's that, Doc? Well, he was pestering me with darn fool questions. He wanted to know what you really thought of him, Matt, as a helper. Huh? <laughs> What'd you tell him? <laughs> I told him you thought he was an adult-pated, sieve-headed, no-account, of course. <laughs> How else would you answer a fool question like that? Yeah. I wonder what got into him. Uh, I'm not sure it was such a fool question. What? What do you mean, Kitty? Well, I'm, I'm just remembering. Sam told me the boys at the bar were giving Chester a bad time yesterday. Oh, what about? Oh, Lud Holt was riding them hard about his job with you. About how nobody could figure how you'd put up with a man like Chester. Oh, Chester can usually take a joke. Oh, I don't think Lud was making a joke of it, Matt. He was making Chester look pretty silly. He said you only kept him on to laugh at him. And before he was finished, the whole saloon was laughing at Chester. Well, then, uh, that explains it, huh? Hmm. Wish I'd have been a little more patient with him. The way he was feeling, what I said couldn't have sounded very funny. Oh, he ought to have better sense, well, Chester's Doc. Chester's sensitive, Matt. You know that. Yeah, but he should know that if I got any complaints, I'll make them myself. Well, you were complaining to him quite a bit yesterday, weren't you? Well, well sure, but... He was still miles away on his trip. I had to bring him down to Earth a couple of times, that's all. Well, I I guess everybody was bringing him down to Earth at the same time. Poor Chester. I even laughed at him when he came into the Long Branch. Well, I'll say this. If he was going to choose a day to hold up and not make an appearance, this is a good one. That wind's bitter cold. There isn't any sense to it, but I guess I better look him up and straighten him out. Maybe some of this pie will help his feelings. Uh, I'll see you later, Kitty. Doc. Yeah. All right, Matt. Bad, Matt. Oh, uh, Marshal Huh? Oh. Hello, Jim. Uh, Business must be bad at the telegraph office. Oh, I've trained my boy to spell me. I, I just wondered if you got that wire all right, Marshal. Oh, which wire was that? Why, the one I gave Chester yesterday. The one from Joe Freeze. Joe Freeze? Yeah, you know, saying he wasn't coming back from Dalhart. Oh, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, sure, Jim. Oh. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> That's the way it was, Marshal. He come in for his horse early this morning and rode out. He say where he was heading, Moss? That's the funny thing, him just getting back and all. He said he was heading for Texas. Saddle up my horse, will you? I want to go pick up a few things. Sure, Marshal. But I'll tell you like I told Chester. This is a poor time to be on the plains with a norther coming up. Yeah. I'll be back for the horse in a few minutes, Moss. Afternoon, Marshal. I'd like to talk to you. No, no, mister. Just take a minute. My name's Lud Holt. Oh, uh-huh. I've heard of you. I'll walk along to your office with you. Listen, Holt. 
you have anything to say to me, you say it fast. Huh? Well, sure. Takes a little talking over, though. I was thinking maybe you could use a good man. I mean, a good one. Real man who can handle a gun. I got him, assistant. Oh, I know. Marshal, you got Chester, but everybody knows he ain't... I'll say one thing for you, Holt. You got plenty of nerve. Sure I have, Marshal. I could do a lot of good for you. You fill Chester up with ideas that he's no good, and then you come around to me asking for his job. Well, you know, Marshal, everybody knows Chester's only good for laughing at Well, there's going to be one less person laughing at him. And that's you. Look, give up. And from now on, Holt... You stay out of my way. Yes, sir. Morning, Mr. Dillon. I seen you coming back there. That's why I pulled up. Oh, we're the only two people I know who are darn fools enough to be out on a day like this. Well, it is a mite chilly. I'll say that. Yeah, it's a water we didn't both freeze to death in the night. Uh, Mr. Dillon, ain't none of my business, but just why are you riding out this way? I'm trailing a man. Oh? Would you like me to help you? No, I won't need any help, Chester. Oh. I won't have any trouble finding him. He doesn't have any more sense than you do, heading out into a storm. Oh, darn it, I'm getting sick and tired of everybody saying how much sense I ain't got. That's so? Yes, sir, that's so. I'd just like to know how you're going to get them papers back from Dalhart if somebody don't go Why didn't you bring me that wire from Joe Freeze? Because I know you'd give me some chilly, Sally, about not making the trip, and Mr. Dillon, I just got to make it. I'd like to do something right. After all, I forgot them papers once, and they're important. Chester. Yes. A man's life is important, too. Yes, sir, I expect it is. Even if he is an adult pated no-account, sieve-headed so-and-so. Mr. Dillon? Who lets the lamps run dry and runs out of coffee. Mr. Dillon, you... Can't sing a note and even whistles off-key. And everybody laughs at him? No, not quite everybody, Chester. Now, come on. Let's get back to Dodge. Yes, Mr. Dillon. and directed by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ken Lynch, Harry Bartell, Joseph Kearns, Frank Cady, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke over the CBS Radio Network.